welcome to the tutorial, second tutorial of this course, where we will be attempting to solve some problems that will clear our concepts that how to design impedance matching network. And we will be using obviously, the tool that we have learnt in our earlier module that is the Smith chart. So, with Smith chart how to design? The first problem is this that design obviously, that L section matching network to match a series R C load with impedance Z L is equal to 200 minus J L 100 ohm to a 100 ohm line at a frequency of 500 megahertz. Also determine the frequency response of the matching network. Now, here you know that anything, so we will have to do a lumped element matching, L section matching. So, the first part is we will have to find out where we are in the region, because based on that we will be having the generic designs. So, the first thing is plot the normalized impedance that comes to 2 minus z 1. So, 2 minus z 1 if we plot in the Smith chart, you see that we are plotting the Smith chart. So, it is here. Now, this is which part? If you remember that this part is region 2, that is why determine the region, it is region 2. Now, in region 2, if you now go back and see that what are your choices, you can have a CPLS or LPCS. That means, first a, you can have a first a capacitor in parallel with the load. A series, then a series L s or a inductor parallel with the load and then a series as a. Let we choose the first one C p L s. So, you see with the load we choose that there is a capacitor in parallel and this is a series inductance that is why we are calling J x and J b. Okay. So, you see the follow the steps then convert since it is a our choice is a parallel something. So, instead of z l we will go to y l, so that this two can be added. So, this z l is converted to y l that you now know from your thing that this is your y l this point. Now, you from the Now, you this 1 plus j x circle you changed by 180 degree rotating. So, this is your 1 plus j beta circle, this this one you see 1 plus j beta circle if you look at your Smith chart, you are here. So, staying on the same constant resistance. That that means, 0.4 you now move on this same constant 0.4 circle, g bar is equal to 0.4 circle and go towards generator and you see you are cutting this 1 plus j b circle here. You see this was 1 plus j b circle, you are cutting it here. So, that we are calling that y 1. Now, you can say that instead of that I can further go on and here also I will cut this circle somewhere here. So, I can go on and this also. So, that will be another solution. Let us first see that this one. So, here if we go, go along the constant conducting circle of y 1 to reach the closest point y 1, this requires adding a. So, how much susceptance I need to add to change from here to here, constant conductance. So, I am basically changing my susceptance. That susceptance you can read out that what is the susceptance value here, what is the 
susceptance value here, the difference is you need to put. Who has put that? That is put by that C p, this, this fellow has put that thing, so that he has put you here. Now, this fellow, now you see this is another series arm. So, here we have come up to here, from here now we need to change to impedance. So, we will impedance that y 1, its impedance is here z 1 bar. Now, we are already on the 1 plus j x circle, from here we will have to go here. So, how that can be done? So, this requires again a change of reactance that is is equal to this. So, you can find this value and so we have found that this is 0.28 and this is 1.2. Therefore, you can now unnormalize that and find out what is your L c value. So, basically you have a L of so and so and C of so and so at 500 megahertz. Now, as I already said that instead of moving upward, you can further go and cut the point downward. So, these two values you will get. So, these are the two other values. Now, which one is preferable? You plot as we have seen that uh, you can plot the frequency response. So, if you plot the frequency response, you see 1 and 2 are coming like this. Now, depending on the application that which value of BSWR you are able to tolerate. If suppose BSWR of uh, 1.5 is tolerable from, so 1.5 BSWR means what? That uh, BSWR is what? 1 plus gamma L bar by 1 minus gamma L bar. So, if this is 1.5, you find out what is gamma L bar, it may be something like point, how much it will come. So, uh, point 0.1, more than point 0.1 it will come. So, let us say point 0.2, let us arbitrarily take that this is point 0.2. So, you take this point 0.2 and then you see that which one? obviously, more or less for point 2, both of them are having the same match. So, uh, you can uh, if you ask me uh, in that sense it is same, but still I will prefer this uh, what is that black one. Why? Because you see the red one that is very sharp. Now, near the design frequency of 500 megahertz, it is giving a very sharp, whereas this is not giving near design frequency, it is not giving match, very good match, but uh, it is less sharp. So, I will choose that, but if you say that point 0.1, then I will definitely go for red one, not the this one. So, depending on your application, you need to choose. Now, that was L section design. So, like that if you are in other regions, you can always find that. Now, this one you see design a short circuit shunt stub matching network to match the load impedance, a complex load 200 ohm line that means characteristic ohm 100 ohm 1 gigahertz. And here it is given that find also that B S W R of 1.5, oh this from this I could have said uh, tolerable B S W R 1.5. So, let us see that again determine single stub matching, if you remember single stub matching that Z L bar you plus plot, then draw the constant B S W R circle as we have done that this is the Z L bar. So, constant B S W R circle, then there will be a movement. So, since it is shunt design, the specification is shunt stub. So, Z L we need to convert to Y L, because admittance plane it will be easier. So, we are converting Y L and 
consider this as admittance chart. If you use y z chart, then you need not consider anything, you know that what is the conversion. So, I prefer y z chart, but if that is not available, so the solution is given in terms of impedance chart. But if you have y z chart, it is always you need not on your mental flame change it to admittance or air, it is given there as a different color one. So, we have come to this y l. Now, now you will have to move along the transmission line that means, move along the constant base w r circle. So, this is the constant base w r circle and moving towards generator means this clockwise direction towards generator. Now, find out where this g is equal to 1 circle or 1 plus j b circle both we call either we call it g is equal to sometimes we call it g is equal to 1 circle sometimes we call 1 plus j beta circle these are same meaning. So, they are we need to now find out that where they are cutting. So, from this y l we will have to move along the generator and you see at this point it is cutting. Now, also I can say no, no I will continue I will not stop here and go here, here also it is cutting this is the 1 plus j b circle. So, here also here also, so these are the two solutions. So, you can take any of that find out the intersection point measure the distance d between y 1 from outer periphery of chart. So, here in this solution the d is coming to be 0 0.11 lambda, then determine the amount of susceptance. So, you value read this value and find out suppose here y 1 is equal to 1 plus j 1.47 that means, now I will have to have the shunt stop and I want that stop should then balance this plus j 1.47 that means, shunt susceptance will be minus j 1.47. Now, if it is a shorted stop short circuit stop. So, this is the in the admittance chart this is the short circuit in the impedance chart this is the short circuit. Now, this is admittance chart short circuit from here we will have to go towards the generator. So, I will have to see that where is minus j 1.47 it will be from here I will have to come somewhere and probably here that minus 1.47 and that will be the length of the stub. So, we have determined that this is 0 0.095 lambda. So, based on your lambda value this problem I think at how much uh, 1 gigahertz. So, 1 gigahertz means 30 centimeter lambda. So, you can find out L is 0 0.095 into 30 centimeter. So, by that so your design is complete. Now, you find out that they said that write these expressions and find the frequency response it is like this you see that at 1 gigahertz it is good match, but then it is changing. So, we will have to find out at which points uh, that is you do that find the bandwidth response and then find the bandwidth for a tolerable base w r of 1.5. So, 1.5 means you will have to see how much is the 1.5 there you will have to make that. Similarly, double shunt stub matching network. So, you see this uh, single stub that has a frequency response and you can plot it like this. Now, let us come to double shunt. So, open circuited double shunt stub matching network we have specified that this thing as we have seen in our laboratory photo that there is a fixed distance. So, let us say that fixed distance is 3.75 centimeter, z l is 60 minus j t ohm, this is 50 ohm. So, you have two open circuited stubs connected in shunt. Now, design 
this L1 and L2, find this L1 and L2 value. So, again determine first the load impedance, convert it to the admittance. Now, since 3.75 at 1 gigahertz, that means 30 centimeter. So, this is lambda by 8, lambda by 8 separation means 90 degree rotation, that is why you rotate the 1 plus J B circle, 1 plus J B circle is this, rotate it by 90 degree, then traverse through the constant conduction, the, where is the load Y L, now traverse through the constant conductance circle to reach this circle. So, that is this part and you are reaching here. So, this is one solution you can continue and you can cut this in another point also here. That means, if you continue it here come here another solution will be here. So, let us take this one then read this value. So, you are getting this y 1 thing and then this change of susceptance is given by the first step, because from coming here to here you have changed the susceptance that was given by the first step. So, you from this you get the first step value, then again from here it is a move along the new lead. So, now draw the another VSWR circle, because now you will have to move along the transmission line. So, for that this new VSWR circle you move and move there, then come here and normalize the two stub impedances. So, corresponding to y 1 and you will automatically reach 1 plus j b circle, that is why you have rotated earlier. So, that you can now come here read the value of y 2 and that this j beta 2 that needs to be compensated to reach the origin of the scale that value we have given here and then unnormalize the two stub impedances, determine the length of the two stubs required. Now, in this case stubs are open circuited. So, reference point is open circuit, open circuit means y bar is equal to how much 0. So, y bar 0 is this leftmost point and from there you find out L 1 and L 2. So, L 2, so that you can. Now, if you take that alternate path, you can get two other things, you can plot the frequency response also. Now, then design a quarter wave matching network to match a 10 ohm load to 50 ohm transmission line. So, here you see that if you have a VSWR specified as 1.5, so, maximum value of the gamma that will be 0.2, yes that time that 0.2. So, you can put in that formula this gamma max value, Z naught and Z L value are given, Z naught is uh, Z naught is 50 or 500 ohm and 500 ohm and this is 10 ohm. So, you can get what is this bandwidth. So, and the characteristic impedance of the transformer is G m, I say geometric mean. So, 22.360 ohm. So, this thing is 22.360, it is L is equal to lambda by 4, lambda naught by 4, what is lambda? Lambda is 3 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz means 10 centimeter. So, it will be 2.5 centimeter length and its percentage bandwidth, if you see from here that it is giving you a bandwidth is 880 megahertz. You see by IEEE definition 500 megahertz more than anything is called ultra wide band. So, this is giving you that percentage wise it is 29 percent. So, a quarter wave transformer though we are calling it not a very high band because it is a single transformer single section, but still it is giving you 29 percent and you see we could achieve 8, 880 megahertz bandwidth, huge bandwidth. There are very few signals who have this type of bandwidth. Now, extend that to a three section matching network to have a maximally flat response. So, 
it is said you take 3 sections. So, you take 3 z l is 100, z naught is 50. You see if you directly ask them to match, there will be a huge mismatch, but by this we have those formulas. So, gamma naught is equal to a 2 to the power n, from that you can find s values. Again that recursive relation you can use and 1 by 1 you can find out this z 1, z 2 and z 3 values. So, you see that from 100 ohm you are first uh, having 92.27, 84, 64 then that is matching to 50 ohm. Let us see the uh, for VSWR of 1.22 which is a good VSWR value gamma max is 0.1. You see the bandwidth, it is 1.869 gigahertz. You are getting the bandwidth percentage wise, you see 3 section that could give you 93.1. You see the response also, it is maximally flat. So, this is the drawing, this is the 50 ohm section, this is the 100 ohm load, but you are progressively making it by progressive making you get a good matching network, such a good bandwidth percentage wise, so it is a very wide band design. So, now you understood how to do a wide band design, wide band impedance matching with that we conclude this section. So, now you have learned how to do impedance matching both for a narrow band design, but if you required a wide band design that idea also you have learnt. So, you will be able to do that in your professional career.